Look, we're having a few issues today recording, so um, I think that just deleted. So we're just looking at question eight here. Okay, look, there's a few different ways we can go here. Most of you would probably try and write down the function. We can do it in terms of t or we can do it another way as well. So let's say you were trying this. What would you do as your original equation? It doesn't matter because they're not talking about initial time or anything like that. So if I want to draw the displacement versus time curve, what would you do? You can go the cos one, it doesn't matter. We can go like this. If you want to write up an equation for um, x, you can. Let's just see, what do you think you've got? It doesn't, it wouldn't matter whether it's cos or sine. You still get the same thing. I've got an x, I've got an x there and a t here. You know how a equals x equals a cos nt? Um, I don't know if we can get much here at the moment, actually, so I don't think we really can. You know what? We don't know anything. We just know that a is 5. We really don't know anything else. So I don't think this is the way to go with this, really, because all we've got is 5 cos nt. I mean, it's supposed to be nt plus alpha. We've got no alpha here, alpha zero if I'm going to start it there. So I don't think you can really use that because we don't know anything about time. Does that make sense? So you're not going to use time here. I wouldn't do this. Okay? So what do you know for simple harmonic motion? That acceleration is negative n squared x. Now, and n, I don't know what the period of motion is. Okay, what else? So acceleration is negative n squared x. What should we do now? What do we know? When, when acceleration is 4, x is 2. So therefore, 4 equals negative n squared times 2. Is that right? So therefore, n squared... Oh, my goodness. But girls, this is plus or minus 2 anyway, isn't it? So it could be plus or minus two. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the. They do. So I'm going to put x is negative two for that one. Okay, girls. So acceleration is four when x is would be negative two. X. No, girls. X and a. Sorry. Displacement and acceleration are always opposite signs. Look, this is just magnitude. It doesn't say whether it's to the right or to the left. I'd keep, look, girls, do you remember when we first did simple harmonic motion? And whenever acceleration's positive, the displacement's negative, yeah. and vice versa. So if I put the positive 2 in here, it's not going to work because I can't get negative, I need a negative times a negative because the squared number has to be a positive. Yeah. So it, that, this is okay because, look, when A is positive, X is negative. And it wasn't saying that it's 2 metres to the right or 2 metres to the left. It is x is plus or minus 2 and acceleration is plus or minus 4. But the positive x goes with the negative a and the negative x goes with the positive a because of the formula. Okay, so when acceleration is 4, displacements, um, I'm going to put negative 2. So 4 is negative n squared times negative 2. So therefore n squared is what? 2, which means that n is plus or minus the square root of 2. But n's always got to be positive, girls, which is equal to root 2 as n is always positive. Now, we know that, again, acceleration is negative n, sorry, not acceleration, x double dot, acceleration is negative n squared x. What else can you do, girls? What can you do from there? How am I going to find the velocity? No, I write d by dx of a half v squared equals negative n squared x. So, girls, I've been given, I've been given the acceleration for a particular time and I need to find velocity. I've got acceleration in terms of x, now I need to find velocity. I could. That's right. I could do that. Yes, I could do that. Now that I know that n is root 2, 
I can stick it in there and we can do that on the side here and see if we get the same answer. Because it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get there. All right, but acceleration is negative n squared x. You have to use it. Otherwise, you're never going to find out what n is. So remember, that's the acceleration in terms of x. And when we do this, we can work out velocity in terms of x. See, if you've got acceleration in terms of x, by replacing acceleration with d by dx of a half b squared, you can work out velocity in terms of x. And we did this last week. So if you differentiate that, you get that. Therefore, if you integrate that, you get that. So therefore, a half b squared is the integral of negative n squared x dx, which is, now we know what n is, so therefore a half b squared is, what do you get, negative n squared x squared on 2 plus c. Do we have, we don't, do we have anything? When? Okay. I'm trying to come up with an equation for velocity. Look, there are two ways. So our other option is to work over here, which seems easier, doesn't it? All right? It does seem easier. Just let me pause for a sec. It's in the middle. So when x is 0, tell me about the, ve the velocity. Sorry, no. When x is 5, sorry, you know how the amplitude of the motion is 5? So I'm going to draw my little swingy thing. So when x is 5 on the end, tell me about velocity. Yeah, it stops. So you do have information, but you don't think you do. Because we know that the amplitude of the curve is 5, we know that the curve, remember x is 0, is in the middle. You're going from 5 to minus 5. So on the ends, the particle stops. So when x is 5, velocity is 0. So we do have, whenever you know the endpoints for x, You've got an xv substitution that you can make because at the endpoints of the motion, the particle stops. But when you put e, you Let's see what we get. And we can put in... Do you get v and t? There's no x over What do you mean I get v and t? So we over here? Yeah. You get dx, d, yeah, and there's no t. There's no, there's no x. Here. All right, so then you can't do it. All right. So this way is that the question asks you to find v when x is 0 and find v when x is 4. So they do really want v in terms of x. All right. And that's when you do this from a equals negative n squared x. Um, that's when you do d by dx of a half v squared is that. And that's how you can link v and x. All right. But if they're asking for velocity at certain times, so whenever they're asking about the times, you do those other ones we were doing last lesson, they're asking for a direct link between acceleration and x or v and x, we go this way with these two possibilities. So I wouldn't go with that. Otherwise, you've got to find t, substitute back in. All right, so when x is 5, v is 0, and we know that n is root 2, so what do we get? That a half times, what's v? 0 squared, which is 0, is negative, root 2 squared is negative 2 times 5 squared over 2 plus c. So therefore c is, well that's 0, what do you get, 25? So therefore a half v squared equals negative n squared x squared on 2 plus 25. So therefore multiplying through by 2, what do we get? v squared is negative n squared x squared plus 50. Now you can just do your substitutions. Yeah, because you'd get, you're squaring it anyway. Yeah, you're squaring it, yeah. So if you put x is negative 5 here as well, you're squaring it anyway, you'll get 0. Like you'll get the same answer, negative 5 squared is positive 25. So it doesn't matter if you put plus or minus. Because, yeah, n is root 2. I could have just kept it as n squared is 2 and just substitute n squared is 2. Yeah, but why do you take it back out? Why don't you keep, like... Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, you're right. Mistake. Negative 2. Thank you. Negative 2. 
All right, I'm sorry about that. I'm just, yeah. It's right. Because, no, 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 no. N squared's two, okay? So N squared is two. N is root two, N squared is two. Okay, so the twos actually do already... Yeah, but if you multiply through by two, you do get a two here. You do. I know the twos cancel, but you've got to multiply everything by two. Multiply the whole thing by two. So, all right, I'll just... Do you want me to rub that off? No, it's okay. You sure? All right. So, yes, you do get x squared, but you've got to multiply that by two, that by two, that by two. So now we can substitute x is zero because we want the velocity when x is zero. And you get v squared is 50. So v is plus or minus root 50, which is plus or minus 2 root 5. No, 5 root 2. Root 25 times root 2, which is 5 root 2 meters per second. We okay? And when x is 4, working out the velocity, you get negative 2 times 4 squared plus 50, I don't know, what's that, 50 minus 32? 18? All right, back to the question. Find the speed of the particle at the mean position. No, the mean position is not 2. It's ex when 2 metres from its mean position. The mean position is 0. But they told us that the acceleration when it's 2 metres from its mean position is 4. So that's when we substituted when x is 2, acceleration is 4. All right, so they want the speed when it's at the mean position, which is x is 0, and they want the speed when it's 4 metres from the mean position. So v is plus or minus the square root of 18, which is plus or minus 3 root 2 metres per second. Okay, let's look at some others. I will just keep it. Question 14, it says a particle moving in a straight line obeys the rule v squared is negative 9x squared plus 18x plus 27. Prove that the motion is simple harmonic and find the centre of motion, the period and the amplitude. So to prove that it's simple harmonic, you've got to prove that acceleration is negative n squared x, provided that the motion is about the origin. So to prove it's simple harmonic motion, you've got to prove this for simple harmonic motion. And the other thing that we've been that we do is that acceleration is d by dx of a half v squared. Do you remember that? So let's try and do something like that. I've got v squared. What don't we do? A half v squared. What does a half v squared equal? Divide it all by 2. Negative 9 on 2 x squared plus, divide it all by 2, 9x plus 27 on 2. Now, I can come up with a, with a um, rule for acceleration because acceleration is d by dx of a half v squared. In other words, if I differentiate this, I'll get the acceleration equation. Okay? So you've got v squared. We'll do half v squared. I know that acceleration is d by dx of a half v squared. So I'm using the rule in a different way now. Okay, so differentiate that and what do you get? Negative 9 on 2 times 2x plus, so I'm differentiating this, plus 9. So therefore acceleration is negative what? 9x plus 9. Aren't we looking for negative n squared? Girls, see that? So I've got negative 9 bracket x, what? Minus 1, which is of the form, which is negative 3 squared x minus 1, which is of the form, acceleration is negative n squared x minus b. So therefore, it's simple harmonic motion, 
with what? What what does the M stand for? All right, with with what? Center of motion what? What's the center of motion? Simple harmonic motion as wait a sec, as displacement or acceleration. Since acceleration is proportional to displacement, Now, we've got to work out the other things. So, girls, what's the period? Let's do that first. Are we okay so far? So, once you get it in that form, negative n squared x only if the centre of motion is zero, but negative n squared x minus b or c or whatever we called it, I think it's b, if the centre of motion is not zero, you just you, once you get to that form, you say therefore it's simple harmonic motion because the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. Now the period is two pi on n, which is two pi on three. So it says find the center of motion. The period we've just done. What's the center of motion? Yeah, center of motion is x equals one. Now we need to work out the amplitude. Now, when does the maximum amplitude happen? On the... All right, it goes like this. In the middle, x is 0. Here, x is max. x is min. Velocity on the end, 0. Now, if you can substitute... Do we have an equation linking velocity and x? Because if you substitute velocity 0, you're going to get the x, which is the amplitude. Remember, the particle goes from there to there. You know the values of x on the ends are the amplitude. It's how far out it goes from the centre. Oh, no. That's what's happening today. Almost. So, okay, do we know what to do? What are we going to do? So, let's sub. See, when v is zero, you get maximum amplitude, maximum you get your amplitude, maximum x, maximum x. So I'll just write down the equation. V squared is negative 9x squared plus 18x plus 27. We're going to sub V is 0. What are you going to divide through, girls, by? Negative 9. X squared minus 2x minus 3. Dividing through by negative 9. X Therefore, x is 3 or negative 1. This really makes sense because what's the centre of motion? And if you're going from 3 to negative 1, what's in the middle? Fantastic. What's the amplitude? Done. So, so girls, on the ends, you know we spent two lessons just talking about on the ends it stops. That's when it's furthest from the origin. You use it in the questions where you don't have T, where you think you don't inf have information. You do have information. And you can always relate. What's good about this is that in the middle, velocity is maximum. X is zero. But on the ends, X is maximum, velocity is zero. And that's your link between V and X. Because you can always put zero for one.